All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Nitha Ramachandra from the NR Hour Sports Show. This is episode 860, alongside with one of our co-hosts, Vedant Gupta from Global K Media. And we're joined by a really special guest. His name is Justice Bartley. He's the player de development video assistant for the 2021 uh, NBA champion Milwaukee Bucks. And he used to play for the Virginia Cavaliers uh, in college. And he used to be uh, a great basketball player back in the day. And um, I just want to say thank you, Justice, for coming on the show. It's truly an honor. We finally made this happen. And like you said, you predicted that you guys are going to win the championship. You guys did it. Congrats. And uh, how, are you, how are you guys doing? I'm doing great. I, I can't even put into words how I'm feeling. You know, I feel like I'm at the top of the world right now. You know, So things are, things are obviously you know, going well on my end. Hmm. So I'll uh, let Vedan start up here first. Yeah, that's great to hear again. Uh, congratulations on that championship. Um, like I said, I was out there, crazy environment. What was that feeling like to just stand on that on that stage after the whole year, after you know, a COVID filled year, especially, and and to finally be able to say you're a champ? Honestly, it it's a great feeling to have, and I, my perspective comes from one where I this is my first year being in the league, so just knowing that all the work, all the sacrifices, all the hours that you're putting into lead to, you know, you uh, being able to be part of a championship team, like those things are unmatched. You know, it makes every single sacrifice, everything you've done, you know, that much more worth it. And obviously like, you know, you want to do it all over again. Yeah. So before we go with uh, what, you, what we do now, what you do now on the box, um, I want to ask you about your playing career and uh, while growing up, when did you get interested in playing basketball? And uh, did you have like have any like role models growing up? Oh, definitely, definitely. And for me, it started off with um, both of my godfathers, um, one being Kenny Anderson and one being Kenny Smith. Yeah. And just just watching those guys play, um, and you know, just being around them, like that opened my eyes up to you know like all the possibilities of this game and what it, where it could take you. And even my dad, and there's just there's so many people like Antonio Davis, like all these guys like have been around my life and have influenced me in, in so many ways that it it led me to just wanting to be part of this game any way I could and, you know, through playing first. And that's where it took off. Yeah, we had your godfather, uh, Kenny Anderson, on the show too, so. I saw, yeah, I, I saw that throughout the year. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, I got to ask about your, uh, also your Virginia time. Um, now you can call yourself a two-time champ. Yeah. To be able to to win their um, ACC championships championship and then come to the NBA with one of your guys, Mamadi Diakinte. How cool is that for you guys to be on that experience together? No, that's so awesome. You know, um, just winning that ACC championship and and coming here and being able to win another like championship like that's that's such a cool thing in itself. And that's that's rare in itself. And then to be able to have a guy who I, we went into school together, came in as uh, freshmen together, uh, you know, so over the past, you know, almost seven or eight years, just being with each other and being part of each other's journey and mommy winning the entire uh, thing the next year, like, that's just so great. Even from my perspective, just watching him, you know, continue to win and continue to thrive and, and figure this, this thing out, like on his own, like, it's just been so cool. And I'm glad I'm part of this journey with him. Yeah, so speaking of uh, Virginia, take me back to your recruiting process because I'm good friends with your boy Travion Gross too. I had him on the show last year, and uh, you, obviously you guys played with, with you guys played with each other in Virginia. So how many offers did you get coming out of high school, and what was, what was the main factor that you chose Virginia because that's a a great college program too? Oh, definitely. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So coming out of school, I was initially committed to Cornell. Um, yeah, I've, I've always been a guy who wanted to go Ivy League. That was like a goal of mine. And um, I ended up having to take uh, ACT, you know, somewhat like the last second mm -hmm. and score high enough. So I had to end up going to prep school with um, my guy, Jarrell Brandon. Oh. Went to prep school together. And uh, from there, there were a few offers on the table. But Virginia offered me the position to be a preferred walk-on. And... And, you know, essentially it came down to being on scholarship at UNLV and walking on at Virginia. And the, the factors that, that weighed heavily for me were, were, all, were always having that thought in the back of my head. And it's not just a four-year decision, it's a four-year decision. And 
And I went on my visit there and the, the team, the coaches, the environment, the community, they, it, it just seemed like such a family environment and something that I wanted to be like welcomed into. So that took me for sure. And that's why I decided to go to UVA. You became an eco athlete, which is something a little bit interesting, you know, off the court doing good things there. What made you want to do that? And how important is you know, the environment, the ecosystem to you? I was taking a class. Um, I forget which year it was, but I was taking this class. And um, during the summertime, we learned so much about the environment, uh, climate, and honestly, just the way that it's changing. And around that time, the Amazon was on fire. And honestly, like, like, I can't make this up. Like I started like, I almost like got a loss of breath a little bit because I was just so shocked by it of what I was seeing and, and knew that there like, there were better ways to go about how we use the resources that we have around this. Mm -hmm. Also understanding that it's bigger than myself, you know, and if there's a way that I can be sustainable or, you know, to create a better environment for the next generation or just anyone that's around me, then that's something I'm willing to do. So that's why I wanted to get so involved in eco athletes. And Lou, Lou does a great job over there um, with the team, just trying to get us started and and you know where we're where we started from to where we are now and where we're going is something that I'm happy to be a part of. And I just can't wait for you know everyone else to you know hop on board with me and you know go along with that journey with me as well. Well, that's amazing. That, that's really amazing what you guys are doing there. Mm -hmm. um, but after your Virginia career, I want to. I'm just curious. Did you go through the uh, the NBA combine process, did you get invited there? And uh, just take me through that process if you did. Um, did you ever think that you could have played in the NBA also? In, in the NBA also? Because we, I thought you had great talent in Virginia. Oh, no, I appreciate you saying that. I ended up um, graduating early at Virginia and ended up going to Maryland Eastern Shore okay. here. I ended up having knee surgery, so I couldn't even play that last year. And it was while I was home um, was when, you know, I started – spending time with myself, thinking about what I wanted to do next. Because honestly, my options, I it was either going overseas yeah. or it was, you know, to just get on the next start of wherever I wanted my career to go in my professional career. And I found myself just at home, always watching film. And a guy who I liked to watch a lot was Malcolm. You know, mm -hmm. Malcolm was my senior when I first came in to Virginia. Yeah. So, um, you yeah, just watching Malcolm and see him do his thing and just, study like the film of the game and that just ended up growing into um you know watching more guys like studying them in a certain way and from there I decided hey like I want to be involved in basketball further and uh, this is the route that I want to go so that's why I decided to take this route um and I ended up actually going to the combine that year and I saw yeah. you know guys <laughs> Kyle and Ty and all of them up there so that was pretty great hmm. interesting <clears throat> No, you're muted. Oh, yeah. There. Sorry about that. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the adversity you faced when you're at Virginia. Um, I believe it was uh, your last year at Virginia was in the first round, having the one seed, 16 seed loss. And how much did that, you know, drive? Uh, of course, that team was driven for the next year to win the championship. I was actually there covering that, and it was really cool to see. But for you to, to be able to maybe take that to a, a different place, uh, I definitely did. It was, well, first, you know, speaking about that team, uh, from the outside looking in, because I was, you know, obviously wasn't there in the locker room with them every day or on the floor with them every day anymore. But I know for certain that those guys were so determined to not prove themselves to anybody else, but to know that they were going to prove, prove their worth, you know, to, to them, you know, like, to know, like, hey, like, we are this good. And, um, they, they had such a focus that was so great to see um, and observe like throughout the course of the season. And for me, I, like that last game, uh, you know, there was obviously like so many emotions that were going on after that game. And I just wanted to win. I, I that was, that was something that I've always um, prided myself on growing up as being a competitor in general, but getting like, Get to that point where we, you know, fall short that early. For myself, I was like, okay, there's some things that I could sharpen. Maybe for my role in that team, I could have been better in 
this way or that way, you know? So there was some, some reflection and once, you know, I got that, I just, you know, wanted to uh, get started on the next, the next thing, the next goal and go after it the same way, that even better. Hmm. So this is a two part question. Um, this pertains to Michael Brogdon, obviously. Uh, how ironic is it that he he got drafted by the Bucks? He played for the Bucks, and actually, I think, in my opinion, he helped set up that foundation for the Bucks franchise. I think he, because he, he obviously he's a great player coming to, uh, out of uh, Virginia, smart, uh, intelligent, intelligent um, smart player, has a high IQ of the game. Um, so, how ironic is it that he got to play for the Bucks and you got the opportunity with the Bucks? How did that come about? So. Uh, yeah, that's that's super ironic, and the timing of it is actually pretty ironic too. Uh, I think someone ended up telling uh, me and D, like, "Hey, if Malk stayed, then that would have meant that it would have been Mamadi's rookie year, my first year, and Malk's fourth, something like that, like similar or fifth, similar to like how it was at Virginia too. So like all of those things were like so ironic, you know. Um, but uh, this opportunity came about for myself. Um, just through, through you know, just working and networking and just trying to do what I could to get my name out there across the league. Yeah. And, you know, one thing led to another. And, uh, you know, obviously, like, things just fell in place the right way. And I'm just so grateful that it did in the way it did. You know, but again, like with, I was mentioning earlier, some of the, um, the extended family members that I've had in my life, you know, who played in the NBA and those types of things. Like, those guys have showed me there are no handouts, you know, it wasn't like, Hey, um, can I get a call? Like it was, Hey, like this is what you want to do. You need to go about it. You know, the same way you go about being the best basketball player, you know? So it was just, you know, constant work and effort and, you know, those things put them together on the table and hopefully, you know, um, you like wish upon a star and hope (laughs) that you're, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let me ask you this. You have a, a chance right now, obviously, soaking a lot, uh, part of the championship team. That's the best team in the NBA, of course. And to learn a lot, are you using that to try to, at some point, make an NBA roster as a player and get back you know, on that side? Or um, are you working towards coaching? Like, what's next for you? Uh, what's next for me, I say, well, first, only God knows, you know. Um, but first is – just doing the best I can at where I am now. Um, like you said, there are just many, so many like moving pieces. And uh, for me, like I'm done playing for sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely want to, you know, see this through and do the best I can. And if that, that if that, you know, foresees me being, you know, a coach in the league, I'm, I'm all for it, you know? So um Right now, I can't. I can't even think that far ahead. You know, not to quote Giannis, but hey, like I'm just right now. I'm just so in the zone, the present moment, doing this, and it's going to be the best at where I am right now. But hopefully, the future looks bright. Yeah. So um, I want to ask you, what's the experience like so far for you being the player development and video assistant? What's that been like for you? It's been great. Um, initially getting here, um, you know, um, you obviously have like the like the video film breakdown. Yeah. And you just, it's a lot of, it's not about me is the biggest thing that I I knew prior into, like prior to this year. And one thing that I very, like very much embraced throughout the season, it's whatever it's going to take for our coaches to be best prepared, our players to be best prepared um, upstairs, like whoever, like whatever I'm needed, I'm all for helping out if it's going to lead us to a championship. And I'm so grateful that it did. You know, it's, it's such a fulfilling um, feeling to have, you know, and uh, the video room that we have this year, those guys are so bright and so, like, so sharp and, like, smart that you can't help but continue to get better, you know. So iron sharp as iron, you know, you have us, like, you know, right there, you know, in the foxhole together and – we're just, you know, constantly like getting each other better. And those types of things go a very long way, especially throughout the course of a long season like ours was. Hmm. Yeah, that was a humble response. And, and speaking <laughs> of humble, your team is a really, really humble team. <laughs> arguably the, the most humble superstar in the NBA. Chris Middleton, a really humble guy. Just that whole locker room. I mean, you're around it constantly. What are those guys like as people? You know, I, I got a chance to cover a game last year and kind of kind of had an interaction with Giannis that really was like, wow, this is genuine. 
No, man, I I cannot even make this up. I when I when I tell you like I'm so grateful to be around the guys, man, from the top to the bottom, these guys are are so genuine and are so are so much about the right things and just wanting to be you know the best that they can be. That there's yeah there are things where it's like dang I'm not a player but I can connect with you on a way that's not even related to basketball at all you know just life you know like I kid you not man like there are so many guys I can just turn to and just you know um, if I needed to just be like hey man like can we talk about something you know and and that's like a great feeling to have as far as the players culture in the in their locker room and when you think about the entire organization like it starts from the top you know all the way down as well so I think that's a great culture that, that they've built there and that I'm happy to embrace and, you know, latch on to as well. So, I mean, I can't even, I can't even put into words how, how grateful I am about that. That's so, that's such a cool feeling to have. You show up to work every day. Sorry to keep up this long, but like you show up to work every day, the hours are long and you're like, when you look up, you look to your left and your right, you're like, dang, I'm happy to be here with all these guys, you know, that make me feel you know, a certain type of way too, and we're all chasing the same thing. So it's just, again, it's just a great thing. Yeah. Hey, you guys, you guys had that Brandon Jennings now to the staff, man. This guy uh, been parting up with you guys. <laughs> no, no, that was so cool too. I saw when I saw that he was at the game, I was like, <laughs> everything comes full circle, man. You know, so that yeah. was that's really cool. Yeah. So um, I want to ask you actually, interesting. Um, so last year, obviously with the pandemic and sports shutting down, you uh, you guys played in the bubble last year. And Giannis made a great point uh, during his post-game press conference after they, you guys won the championship. He said everybody was homesick. They're, they're, he said they're, you guys are a family-oriented team. So what did you guys learn from last year in the bubble now and then to now uh, winning the championship? Because you guys came a lot over, overcame adversity, like Vadon said before, and um, you guys had a lot of injuries this year. So how, what was the, the key thing that made you guys continue to work hard this season? And I think Drew Holiday made a big difference coming in too. Uh, yeah, and I, I just say like that. That's a little bit difficult question to ask. I wasn't part of that team with him last year, so I can't speak on what their experience was. But I know that through the adversity that we faced throughout this season, um, these guys didn't waver on the 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 end the end goal, and they didn't waver on each other either. You know, so um, you know, just having to bounce back every single day and to show up at work and do the best you can. I think that's what's been the most consistent piece of this year. And obviously that's my opinion. And, and um, you know, these other guys will have their own as well. But I know through observation and just being with the guys this season that it was always an emphasis on staying locked in, you know, and doing the best that you can do in the 24 hours that you have, you know, so. I think those things over time just built on themselves and added up. And, you know, we we're just fortunate enough to have this be our result. Yeah, I think the family is a great way to put it. I remember talking to Coach Bud last year about the family. Of course, then there were two pairs of brothers of the Lopez's and the <laughs> aunt. But, um, you know, he was talking about family. But Coach Bud this year had a lot of criticism. How did you see, you know, on the internal side, how did he kind of block that out and be able to, put together a four game sweep from down 2-0 to, to win that championship? Um, so that, uh, again, like you said, from my perspective, it honestly was almost like it didn't exist, you know, and that's a key takeaway that I've learned from watching Bud and all the other coaches as well. Just, you know, keeping your head down and doing the job, man. Like there's obviously going to be criticism with everything. And honestly, there's probably criticism from others, you know, questioning or critiquing what I did this year as an intern. So um, again, it's like, yeah, like blocking out everything that's there, but just harnessing and focusing on what's in front of you and just going going forward with it, with all that you have, you know? So that's, that's the key takeaway that I've learned from the coaches. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm glad that that's something I learned this early in my career. Yeah, so now let's get to the fun stuff. Take us through this playoff experience and, um, obviously, uh, the Brooklyn series was a tough test for you. It was a good test for you. You guys were down 0-2, but you guys overcame that series. So uh, what was that playoffs experience like? And obviously, fans being back in the stadiums, that's a big thing for you guys. So what was that? Just take me through the whole playoffs. What was that like for you guys? Um, the first the first round, wow. Yeah. Uh, 
firing on all cylinders. It was it was it was it was so it was so great, man, because the guys just seemed so we like united on all fronts, you know, when everything was clicking and we found, uh, when we just uh, got to the next round and there was a bigger challenge. Yeah. It was it was almost the same thing, except you just had like a little bit of tweaking on one part or another. And um, you know, fortunately we were able to get past that round as well. But the fans, man, the fans make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And um, it's actually pretty funny because at the beginning of the year, uh, you know, there weren't any fans in the building. So there, some of the staff members are like, man, I just wish you could experience what a real Bucks game is like, you know, yeah. we're like, we're like top five in the league with, with the fans. And a lot of it was like, like for me, and my head, I'm like, well, dang, yeah, I hope so too. Like when, is, when are we going to get to that point? And as like, as the series just kept going, wow. Like I, every game was, was, Every home game for me was knowing, like, yeah, the fans got our packs for sure. And I think that helps the players on the floor tremendously, you know, as well as helping us do our job as well. well. All I can say is good luck opposing teams when you go to Milwaukee because that fan base is crazy and it's tough to play in there. And uh, and, and you can tell because Brooklyn struggled in, in Milwaukee. So, yeah, it was, yeah, man, it was, it was so loud and it was so consistent, you know, and um, there were times when I remember um, Coach, you know, Coach Bud yelling to get one of the guys in the game, and the guys at the end of the bench can't hear it. So it's almost like a, you're like playing telephone, you know, us in the us in the behind the bench and everyone else on the bench. They're like trying to like trickle down the same name and everything. So man, it was it was loud, it was rowdy, exactly what was needed. And man, I'm so grateful to be a part of that. Man, it was so cool. Uh. I'll tell you what, from the outside, Deer District on championship night, there was like 100,000 people there. You could barely walk. So that's that's what I'm sure you guys live for, is to have that kind of presence around the stadium and that kind of support. So, right. that, yeah. yeah, I don't mean to cut you off, but, like, we would hear the fireworks in the locker room. You know, so wow. after yeah, after the like hearing the fireworks, you're like, hey, like, this, that's like, it's loud, man. You know, so it was it was so cool. So cool. I was at parade. I was at parade to be able to go through that, and and now you can see the whole city. Now I can see the whole state. It felt like the whole state showed up to that parade. It was there was a point where it just looked all you could see was a, a sea of people, and I swear it looked like the DMX concert. You know, mm -hmm. the one it, showed, it was it was just so unreal. And again, you know, with me being in the position that I'm in, to see that. It's like, wow, like they turned out so much for like the players. And um, I can't speak on how the players feel, but I can only imagine what they feel like, man, like this is so great to know that all these hours and telling you that the investment you put into it, like to know that it all pays off and to know that like the people you're trying to do it for, are, like surrounding you and have your back, uh, it probably is a great feeling to have, you know? Hmm. So obviously, uh, same, same you two game six and when you guys won that championship, Obviously, what, what what goes through your mind when, when, when the final buzzer uh, hits and then uh, everybody's celebrating? And what goes through your mind at that time? Oh, man. So I was – it was, honestly, it was like – it was leading up to it, you know, because, like, there's a point where you knew, like, okay, like, we won this. So we just need the buzzer to – we just need the buzzer to go off, you know. Um, I, I wanted to myself – I wanted to run on the floor during the game, you know, um, but – yeah, it was such a rushing like, uh, feeling and having a confetti fall, like you see it on TV at year after year. But to finally have that, um, you know, experience was was so cool. And and then uh, when yeah, when everyone was on the floor, you know, first thing I did was just go to my guys. You know, like guys in the video room, the coaches, and Mamadi. I was like, it was just one of those things that just takes you back again. You know, for us to go to school together. It was such an amazing experience, but there was a point where, um, you know, I just we just remember like, hey, but we have we have a couple of guys that we can't share this with right now because of because of the, the COVID protocol. And man, I, I just wanted so much for everyone to be there, and um, you know, so you know, I ended up I ended up um, calling TA. Mm. You know, and uh, from the outside looking in, you only see how much 
those guys value family, you know, and obviously there's a culture in the locker room, but those guys, those, those brothers, that family, like they value it heavily. So um, the first thing I just, you know, thought of was just to call him and just give the phone to Giannis and, and just have him at least share that moment. I don't know if they did before or not, but that was one of those things I experienced in yeah. you know, the locker room and everyone's just enjoying themselves and, you know, popping champagne and all those other things. It was, you know, it was such a cool thing to have. No, I saw, I saw that picture with you and Giannis with the phone after the game. That was, that was awesome. And, uh, much much respect to Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday because they have to travel in a plane to go to Tokyo for the Olympics. That's crazy. Much respect to them. No, exactly. Yeah, those guys are those guys are are my stars themselves. Yeah. Oh. And I just go go go. Um, I I know from being in that locker room with Danassis and Giannis one time. Um, I got Danassis to speak a little Greek. Did you ever get a chance to learn a different language from any of those guys? Yeah, you hear it all the time. This year, and, and you know, we had Axel and Mamadi speak French as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so yeah, you hear, like, multiple languages, you know, going across the locker room all the time uh, or on the floor, and, um, like, I'm over here, like, trying to pick up as many words as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what words I'm picking up, but I'm picking up something. <laughs> um, so what advice, what, do you, what advice would you give to young athletes, young kids, and – uh, like Vedan and other kids, what, what advice would you give them to, that are trying to reach their goals? Uh, just to keep going and and to know that if you don't see a challenge, if you don't see an obstacle on your journey, then you probably didn't dream big enough. And I don't say that lightly. I, I think that with all great things that you're going after, there's, there's you know, a hiccup that you may have, a hurdle that you may have to jump across, but you got to keep going. And that's something that I tell members of my family all the time and that's something that was reflected back on me as well. And it helps you, you know, and it helps to have that voice within your head just telling you to continue to stay after it. And uh, to also know that that doesn't mean that like whenever you have that feeling of it being the end, it doesn't mean that it's the end, man. So uh, I say, yeah, for anyone going after whatever they want to chase, whatever they want to do, just to keep going, you know, and, and all things are possible. I know I've asked like 50 questions about the championship, but I want to know how long it took to like finally for everything to sink in. Was it, was it the parade? Was it right there at the championship when the buzzer sounded or has it still not come yet for it to really sink in at your world champ? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I hit you and let you know when it does. Yeah. <laughs> like it hasn't at all. You know, I haven't even watched <laughs> the photos that have been taken, the videos. I haven't rewatched the game. It, man, it's just it's just one of those things where um, you just want to stay in that present moment as long as you can. And obviously, you know, eventually you want to get back to work. But, you know, it's, it's, it's just one of those things where it's so rare that it happens when it finally happens to you. You almost don't even realize that it's happening to you, you know? So, yeah, I'll, I'll hit you and let you know. <laughs> yeah, so um... – now we do this fun little segment on the show um, that we usually do is called the rapid fire segment. But we're gonna add in to we're gonna add in two segments today. First, we'll do the rapid, and then we'll add in Vadon's segment that he does it on, on his show. Uh, but uh, you ready for this rapid fire segment? Hey, let, 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 do the best I can. Let's do it. All right. Um, the first one here: Kawhi Leonard's laugh or Kevin Hart's laugh? <laughs> Kevin Hart. <laughs> How does that Larry O'Brien trophy feel? Yeah. Sorry. I said, how does that Larry O'Brien trophy feel? Heavy than you think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, did, you, uh, did you smoke a cigar at, in the locker room? Did not. No. Didn't want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what was your, your go-to dance celebration? Uh, jumping up and down and pushing each other. <laughs> like pushing people around me. <laughs> All right. Um, would, you say you're, would you guys say you're better than the Jurassic Park uh, fan base outside? Ooh. Wait, wait, wait. Which one? The one uh, that Raptors. The, um, they have the same exact thing outside. Uh, outside of the state. That's what they do usually. The Raptors fans. And now, uh, what do you say? You guys have the best. Uh, one of the best uh, above the Raptors. Oh yeah! Come on, man. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Milwaukee. Milwaukee turned out for sure. Yeah. What's your favorite food? Ooh, I uh, appreciate like a little med bowl, man. I got some falafels. <laughs> For real, man, some falafel, spinach, uh, some couscous, 
some old, some Kalamata olives in there, put some hummus in there. Oh man, that, I need to make one now. <laughs> uh, funniest Bucks player? Bryn, my dog Bryn. Honestly, a lot of those guys are funny, man. But Bryn, Bryn's a guy who's gonna catch you off guard. He, uh, Jeff, Bryn and Jeff are the funniest guys on the team. Hmm. Hundred percent. Well, your screen froze. I think yeah, I think it did. Oh man. All right. Um. All right. Let me ask you this. Uh. What, what was the first, all right, after you guys left the, the stadium, what, were you, what, what was the first thing, what was the other thing you did? I went home. <laughs> I can't lie to you, man. We left, like, some of the video guys, like, we left the arena, we're like, man, this is late, and, and we're like, I was going to call it a night. So I went home. I went to sleep. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. I, was, I, 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 um, I wanted to know, uh, I, I mean, I guess, can you say something in some of the languages that you've heard in the locker room? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, no, uh-uh. <laughs> I, I don't, one, I don't know what I'm saying, that's for sure. And two, uh, I'm trying to remember, I'm probably going to be it, so. Uh. <laughs> you got to be careful of the guy who tells you something means something and it doesn't mean that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what was your reaction? When Giannis went to Chick Fil A the next day, ordered a fifty-piece McNugget and uh, scored because after he scored fifty points, what was your reaction to that? Oh, that was awesome, and it was honestly like it was pretty cool because it looked like like he was finally like like not to say that he didn't enjoy himself before, but like he could just like ah like go you know do his thing you know uh, so that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. We got to live it up a little bit. Yeah, finally silence everyone who's, who's been doubting him. And I know that's something that a lot of players look forward to. Um, what's going to be your, your off-season, you know, favorite part of the off-season now? Do you have something planned or is there anything that you're looking forward to in the off-season? Honestly, probably, and I, I don't mean to say this like just for, just because we're on camera, but um, yeah, taking that time, a little reprieve to like get my body right, you know, get a couple massages, go see the family. Um, but man, I'm so eager to like just sharpen myself, sharpen my skills and get better and hopefully, you know, continue to bring that and, and win another championship, you know? So that's, that's what I'm like eager to do. Hmm. All right. Speak. All right. I want to get to this one player. I, I, I love him as a player. He brings a defense mentality every game. He's, he's crazy. Um, he has a, a, he has a toughness of PJ Tucker. Take me to, what's it like working with uh, working with PJ Tucker? His personality is amazing, and obviously you can see him how he celebrated during the championship. It was awesome. Yeah, no, working with Tuck is great. Um, Tuck's one of those guys where, like, he knows his niche. He knows, you know, and he's a guy that I've heard constantly just repeat to say like, it's not about me. I mean, like for him, it's like he's like he's saying like it's not about him. He he time and time again has mentioned that he just wants to like do what the team needs to do. Like whatever is needed from him, he'll do it. And that's, again, man, the things that I'm learning are so great for me, especially as early in my career, to be around the type of guys I'm around, whether that be the players, coaches, front office guys, like it's been, it's been great. So Tuck, Tuck's one of a kind for sure, man. Like Tuck, Tuck I love being around Tuck. Hmm. DJ Tucker is awesome, and and I know he brings the energy. But how about Bobby Portis? Oh, Bobby uh, that Portis. guy always, always energetic. What can you say about Bobby? And by the way, I heard a lot of Bobby, Bobby, Bobby chants outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm so happy that happened for him too. You know, um, again, yeah, like outside looking in, you see like another guy who's just hardworking, all about the right things, and to have like to again to have like his to be part of his journey. Um, this season was just pretty cool too because you know you read the articles I'm sure about you know, like his journey being back in Arkansas and um, where he is now mm -hmm. and that that's that's like what it's all about you know just being about the right things taking care of you know him taking care of his family and like all those other things like it's just been so cool I want you to just witness uh, what's your hype music my hype music hmm and hmm. that I listen to a lot of music, man. Um, hmm, that's that's a tough one. Hype music. I wouldn't know if, if you call it like hype music 
Uh, so you're asking like what like gets me in the zone? Yeah, what uh, like for example, what get, um, in the locker room or anywhere? What gets you guys into into the zone? Oh, for them, they switch it up. They listen to everything. <laughs> yeah. And for you? So yeah. For me, um, for me, uh, I mean, it's got to be a Jay Z song. Mm. You know, like can I live? Imaginary players like me, like I, I love Jay Z. Me and Jay Z is the greatest artist of all time. Yeah. So there are a lot. Of, uh, you want to do your uh, segment? Yeah, let's do. Let's do the flip the switch. So my signature segment is I have the person I'm talking to asking me a few questions. So I'm allowed to bring it here. So what we do is in person, I hand over the mic to you, and you get to ask me <laughs> Nathan questions. Okay, cool. All right, so I get started now. Yeah. yeah. All right. When did you get started uh, going about this uh, this career you're on, this path you're on now? Well, you want to go first, sir? Yeah, you, you can go. All right. Um, I started this show last year uh, during the pandemic when all the sports shut down and uh, all my friends uh, were getting bored, not seeing any content, no sports. So they told me, actually, my friends told me to start this and I started this for them. And uh, so when, when I started this, I, I, I did all interviews on Instagram live only. But I started building a team uh, last mid last year till now. Now we have seven people helping us out with the, with the show, including Vedant. Um, so th that's how we started it. And uh, I think I, I thank my friends every day because they're, they they helped me push me to start this show. And now we're at eight, you're the 860th episode, uh, and we're also on all these other social media platforms like uh, Spreaker, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio now, and it's just amazing. I didn't expect this to grow fast, but it's growing fast in a year. And um, it's all about hard work and dedication. So. Yeah, for me, I started when I was 11. And I wanted to, you know, show kids that they can do things at a young age that we don't have to wait till we're 20 or 30. And I think I just got repetition and repetition. And I'm now up to over 1500 celebrity interviews, uh, not not shows like Nathan turns out the shows. Um, <laughs> I've got quite that far with the shows, but over the three years to be able to do um, that many interviews just meet people and hear their story is really really cool and I feel like you know it gives a chance to inspire my audience that they can do things at a young age as well so even like hearing this show is something that you know you live for just to just to hear those stories okay nice all right how has learning the stories from the people you're interviewing influenced your own life um that's a good question actually um we uh we, we've been learning actually we've been learning a lot and uh, getting not we're, we're the type of show that's not like we're not reporters that ask 20 questions on the sideline we're like the casual lay back sit back casual show that's why everybody loves it right now and um you know we our goal is to learn the players personalities or whoever uh how hard they, how hard they work to get to where they are right now uh and learn about their stories and it's it's, it's amazing we, we learn we've been learning a lot from this and um it, i'm just grateful and i think the my most memorable thing I learned was uh, having Isaiah Thomas on the show, former Detroit Piston. Uh, that was an honor. And I learned a lot from that. And uh, it, it's just getting to know each personality. That's it. So. Yeah, I would say you can learn a couple of things from everyone you talk to. And it doesn't have to be an interview either. It could be like even the janitor sometimes just having a conversation with the janitor. You'd be surprised how much you can learn and how much they contribute to things. So I think I'm constantly work, learning about stuff, the work ethic, the, the how you do it, the technique, even talking to players sometimes. You know, I'm, I'm 14 right now in high school playing basketball. So always trying to learn some tips and always trying to get, get better on, on that side as well. So I just think it's a wealth of information. and We're, we're fortunate enough to, to be able to learn that. Exactly. All right. So my last question. How important has it been for you guys to have the right people around you as to where, you know, you're putting all these hours and you're, you're dedicating your time and so many other things to making these shows and these interviews happen. Yeah, so um, like I said, I have seven people helping us out, including Vedant. Uh, it, it takes a lot of hard work as a team. And uh, some of the most of them are always busy because they have crazy work schedules. But we find a way how to put content out every day. Um, we, I, I'm always putting content and uh, like I said, if we're if you want to be passionate about what you what you love, then you keep doing it. We, we're doing it. Um, like for example, I can be sometimes we can be a little too pushy when it comes to reaching out to these guests uh, if you uh, message too many times. But we just keep going. Uh, we just want a yes or no answer. We if we get we, we've gotten a lot of no's and we just move on to the next person. And 
It's all that's what you have to do. Sacrifice. We've been we talk about sacrifice a lot. This is sacrifice, and uh, you got to do what the things you want to get in life. You have to sacrifice for and keep going. So, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I think you know my support system has has been a lot of people like Nathan said. This scene being being able him allowing me to come on these episodes, but. Um, on top of that, my, my dad and my family travels a lot with me so that I live in Michigan. So Milwaukee's like a seven hour drive and I've been around the country, been New York, Orlando, uh, Minneapolis, everywhere for Super Bowls, Final Fours, whatever. And for them to just say, let's make that drive, let's do it. It's, it's priceless. And then, you know, to get the content you get to interview the guys you get to interview, like Giannis, like you know, Thanasis, like Coach Bud and and people around the league is just, it starts with that support system. So it's, I'm beyond grateful for that. Yeah, man. Hmm. So the, the last two things before we let you go, um, our team is part of this foundation. It's called the Hugh Jackson Foundation. And we're trying to help him prevent human trafficking, making sure the community stays safe and the kids stay safe. So I'll send you the foundation so you can go check it out. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I definitely yeah. want to like and the last thing here, uh, would, you like, would, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and essential workers right now? Yes. Thank you for everything. Seriously, thank you for everything and for the continued sacrifice and the continued, like, push that you keep making to show up every single day. Like, I'm sure it's not easy, and I wish you the best, and I wish you more safety as we continue to fight off this pandemic, man. Yeah, well said. And there it is. That wraps up episode 860 with Justice Bartley, a former Virginia Cavalier player. Now he's a video player development, development assistant for the, for the NBA champions, Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, thank you again for coming on the show. It's truly an honor. Uh, we would like to have you back on the show so you can meet the full team eventually. But keep up the great work, man. You're a, a, a great young star on the rise. Hopefully you get a chance at coaching at some time down the line. But uh, you, um, you, you're with, a, obviously, a great organization. And it was truly inspiring watching your team overcome a lot. Uh, especially this season, you guys uh, made the fans happy. This is, I think this NBA season was one of the best because a lot of unknowns and it was the new new teams. It, it, it was nice to see new teams in the playoffs for one, new right. fresh blood. So I think you guys brought that back and uh, good luck. We're wishing you guys good, uh, uh, good luck this whole season coming up and uh, continue success. And thank you again. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, no problem.